The Tech Nerdist channel is brought to you by these fine Patreon supporters. If you'd like to check us out on Patreon, pop over to www.patreon.com slash technivorous. That's T-E-C-H-N-I-V-O-R-O-U-S. Here, we do our best to stay up to date on the latest and greatest in 3D printing and tech and keep you informed on the latest developments in these sectors. So, if you're interested in getting updates on 3D printing or technology such as programming, robotics, artificial intelligence, and things of that nature, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below, leave a like on this video, and comment about what you'd like to see in the future because we make these videos for you. Hey guys, I know I promised you another update on the Ender 3 Dual Extruder yesterday. I got a little bit wrapped up in what I was doing and I didn't quite get it mounted until just now. So let's take a look at it and see how it's come out so far. Uh, I'm pretty pleased with the design so far. I do need to make a couple of tweaks to a couple little spots, um, nothing major, and then we'll start adding the fans. Right now, I'm working on the mount for the NEMA 17 for the second extruder. So we will jump over and check that out on the printer as well. Um, you can kind of see it here in the window. Um, but we're going to go ahead and jump over to the printer and look at that mount real quick and see how it's coming out. And here we are, okay? So we have both of the hot ends mounted. We have the fan lined up and ready to go. It is still very sturdy, very solid. I had a gentleman asking me a question about what I was going to do about the difference in the nozzle height. And the nozzle that you see on the right here, um, hanging down a little bit lower than this one, um, this nozzle right here is worn and old. So once I replace it, I'll have a little bit better idea of how far off they are when I have a new nozzle. So um, we won't be doing that until we get into lining the both the hot ends because both of these are going to have a hot end fix and the liner needs to be the exact same height and so does the spacer because they are level at the top so if we can make those liners the same height and the spacers the same height then when we screw it in as tight as it'll go they will both be as close as we can get um, off the bat and then there are ways to make minor adjustments from there but it shouldn't need to be dialed in too much past that point it should be pretty close i mean that's kind of the point of using two hot ends that are exactly the same and mounting them at the same height uh in theory you should be pretty close to where you need to be as far as the nozzle height being level so um like i said as you can see the mount is pretty solid there is a little tab cut in here for the wiring and i did not screw in the bottom two holes yet simply because all of this is going to have to come apart. This is Mach 2. Um, so here was our first iteration. It worked pretty well. Um, this is the general idea for the bracket here. And then we added the plate to get the hole spacing right. But I wanted to make sure that the opening was circular and not square like I initially made it. I don't know why I made that judgment call the first time. Um, but things are looking pretty good. Let's get a little bit closer here. Um, and from here, we'll go down a little bit, tilt the camera up so you can kind of see those nozzles. Um, not a lot of clearance, but more than enough for what we need. As you can see, this guy hangs about two millimeters below that rubber sock on both of the hot ends. Um, should give us the clearance that we need, although we are going to need to bring in some sort of side sweep here pointed at the nozzle at both of them for the part cooling fans. We will be adding an additional part cooling fan. Eventually we will have a bracket with two hot end cooling fans, but for now we're going to leave it with one and see if we can make that work. Um, like I said, the plan is to eventually upgrade to two fans, but with one fan and it only heating and cooling one hot end at a time, it should be sufficient. The only problem is uh, it's going to take time to switch between nozzles if they're not set to the same temperature because if this one's higher um, and I'm cooling this one to the appropriate temperature it's also going to cool this one which means in order to switch back to this filament it will have to heat it back up so um, some caveats with the single fan but not too bad not not that big of a deal um, one of the reasons I'm doing this is because once you have so many printers I mean I'm not really in a hurry to print things anymore I used to try to get my print time down as fast as I could and print things 
and have them done so I could start the next print. And now I usually always have an empty printer. So I've slowed down quite a bit. You can see the finish on this isn't perfect. Um, the final model, obviously, I will print a lot slower. This one was sped up slightly in order to get the part out and make sure that it fits and, and that everything is working properly. So you may notice that unlike the last mount, the right hand side of this mount is up a little bit too high, which is going to be a problem. So um, we're going to make a minor adjustment to this hole right here, and that should fix things but the next iteration will have a fan holder. So let's jump over and take a look at that cover that we're printing. And this is it, it's just getting started. This is basically the end stop cover for the X axis. Um, and then on top of it, we've added an extra mount for NEMA 17. So it'll basically sit right in the left corner covering the wheel, um, the pulley wheel. And on top of that, there will be another motor. So both of the extruders will be on the left hand side, one in the front and one in the back. The reason for keeping them both on the same side is because you want that weight to rest on the lead screw uh, in order to get it to travel evenly. Now with that added weight, we are going to also have to make a slight modification to the right side of the gantry and ensure that everything is trimmed and level. And once we do that, we will tighten down that eccentric, eccentric nut again and make sure that it's traveling vertically and not catching at all. Because if the right side and the left side are not even, that's going to cause problems with the prints, probably even knock them over with the other nozzle when it travels, and we don't want that. So um, that's going to be it for this video, guys. I'm going to wrap it up. Stay tuned. I'm supposed to be receiving that FL Sun Q5 Delta printer today, so if it shows up, we will do a, a live broadcast and a setup and first impressions unboxing video. So um, look forward to that. Don't forget to leave a like on this video if you're following along. We've got lots of steps left in this process. And we are basically just building the pieces. Pretty soon, we will begin on the plug-and-play hardware as soon as that second board gets here. So stay tuned, guys. Well, that's it, guys. That's going to wrap up this video. If you've noticed the shirt, the merch is available. Go ahead and check out the Teespring merch link down below. It won't be available on a channel store until I reach 10,000 subscribers. And so far, I am just about to hit 5,000. So uh, it'll be a little while, a couple more months before you see this on the actual channel. But... They are available now. I have a couple other designs. Feel free to pop over there and check them out and know that any purchase through the Teespring site definitely helps to promote our site here and increase the channel's ability to make videos in the future. So we appreciate all your support. Don't forget to check out the Teespring link. Check out our Patreon link. Leave a like on this video and hit that subscribe button because we have a lot more coming at you in the coming days.